What is up guys, welcome to this prediction video. For this one, we're looking at the Premier League clash taking place on Sunday the 10th of December between Everton and Chelsea at Goodison Park. Now the last time these two sides met was on the 18th of March. Both sides were in a bit of a tricky position. Chelsea obviously still trying to get back into Europe, somehow. Um, and Everton kind of fighting for survival, but that seems to be a recurring trend for the Toffees in the last few seasons. Things were tight and tense right through the first half, and eventually in the 52nd minute, Jao Felix opened the scoring for the home side after a bit of an uncomfortable shot, but the ball kind of trickles into the bottom corner, and that's all it needs. 1-0 to Chelsea. Everton not taking it lying down, forced the issue, and in the 69th minute, Abdullah Dekore managed to get them an equalizer that Kai Havertz probably thought he cleared off the line, but the referee adjudged the ball to have crossed the line, and it was given 1-1. Chelsea again thought they found themselves ahead when in the 76th minute, they were given a penalty, and Kai Havertz made absolutely no mistake from the spot. But once again, Everton proved that they were a resilient and a stubborn team when in the 89th minute, Sims managing to ghost himself into the Chelsea defence from the left wing and finishing quite well. And that's how the match ended 2-2 with the spoils shared at Stamford Bridge on the day. We start off our team analysis with Everton. It is three wins, one loss, and one draw in the last five for the Toffees. Their last match being a surprise 3 0 win at home against Newcastle. Players that I need to highlight for Everton obviously, Abdullah Decore. This guy might be playing as a midfielder and a deep midfielder at that, but he's got five goals and an assist already this season. He is leading the way for Everton in terms of the goals. And it just goes to show that there is creativity in the side. And despite the fact that maybe the front men are not shining, they're getting their goals. And speaking of front men, I want to talk Dominic Calvert-Lewin with four goals and one assist. I think, you know, a lot of people expected Calvert-Lewin to do a lot better this season, um, but he did not start the season off well at all. It, he's been plagued by injuries. Um, found himself off form for large parts of the season. Um, and while he has gotten four goals and an assist, I do think that Calvert-Lewin is capable of so much more. And finally, I want to talk the man between the sticks for the Toffees, Jordan Pickford. Now, Everton have not really been enjoying the best run of form for the last few seasons, but Jordan Pickford has chosen to remain at the club. Credit has to be given to him for his loyalty to the club. Um, I know that there's obviously attention coming to Jordan Pickford from um, the likes of Chelsea, of course, um, and Manchester United, but he's chosen to stay. And I think Everton are where they are, certainly just because of Jordan Pickford. Next up, we talk the away side Chelsea. It is two wins, two losses and one draw in the last five for the Blues, their last match being a 2-1 loss at Manchester United. Um, a bit of a surprise there, the fact that that one didn't end in a draw. But Chelsea fought, they fought really, really hard. But again, I think Manchester United were wasteful and Chelsea were quite lucky. Players I want to highlight for Chelsea, firstly, Nicholas Jackson with seven goals and one assist. Again, I want to highlight the fact that three of those goals came in one match. Great stuff, you scored a hat-trick. But why are you not scoring more consistently? He was deployed as a number nine against Manchester United, but it seems like still he just he's not living up to the expectations placed on him as the Chelsea centre forward. A player who is doing very well at Chelsea though is Cole Palmer. With five goals and four assists, Cole Palmer is the creative force out wide for Chelsea, but he is also very flexible in the sense that he can play in a variety of positions. He's also been given the responsibility of taking all the penalties for Chelsea. And that is actually where we see quite a few of his goals come in as well. And finally, I want to talk Enzo Fernandez with his three goals. Enzo Fernandez has been sort of bolstering Chelsea up in their midfield, um, giving them a bit more dynamism in that midfield. But I think, you know, Enzo is used to playing 
um, more as a kind of literally a central midfielder, somebody who doesn't drift out of position too much. Um, but Chelsea right now needs somebody more of a playmaker kind of midfielder, like Cesc Fabregas perhaps. Um, and I think that's why Enzo Fernandez is maybe struggling a little, is because there's so much more expected of him that he's not maybe used to. Um, but I do think, based on his performances with Argentina, that Enzo Fernandez is capable of great, great things. Okay, on to the head-to-head -head and the SDM2 verdict. The last five matches between Everton and Chelsea have ended in one win for the Toffees, two draws and two wins for the Blues. This is a very complicated fixture. Um, Everton obviously just coming off that win against Newcastle, which was a massive shock. Chelsea, I think the loss against Manchester United was equally as shocking. They probably would have expected to go there and get something from that fixture. If we look at the log right now, Everton are 17th with 10 points. Chelsea are 10th with 15 points. However, we must take into consideration the fact that Everton were docked 10 points. I'm not sure exactly what it was for. I think it was misadministration or financial fair play rules or whatever it is. But Everton would actually find themselves above Chelsea had it not been for that. So in terms of performances on the pitch, Everton are actually doing very, very well right now. I think another important factor for us to look at is if you look at the last few fixtures for Chelsea, they have a win against Tottenham Hotspur, a draw against Manchester City, a loss against Newcastle, and a loss against Manchester United. Those are some very, very difficult teams to play against, whereas if you look at Everton, their fixtures were a little different. They also lost to Manchester United. Um, but their fixtures, you could say, were arguably easier. The win against Newcastle as well being a massive surprise to them. But based on the, those fixtures, the other three, they would have been expected to win. Um, I think they drew against Brighton as well, which probably was disappointing for them. I think, honestly, if you, if you look at this fixture, the team that is playing better right now, I really do feel, is Everton. Um, not just based on those those recent results, but based on results right through. Um, I think they're going to take a lot of heart from this victory against Newcastle as well. Um, I do think this ends in a draw though. I don't think Chelsea are easy to deal with. Um, I think Chelsea are going to go out, they're going to be stubborn, they're going to be difficult to break down. Um, but I think they're going to give as good as they get. Everton obviously with their home ground will have an advantage, but I don't think it's going to count for too much. I think um, a player like uh, Calvert Lewin for Everton and a player like Jackson for Chelsea. These guys should be getting your goals and they're just not. Um, Everton are getting their goals from Ducore in midfield, but I think he's going to have his hands full dealing with the likes of um, and Enzo Fernandez and, and company in there. So I think he's going to be kept quiet for large periods of time. So I do think this one ends in a draw. Um, I think Everton will actually be grateful for that, but it's it's just it's like I said earlier on it's a very complicated fixture but I do think a draw is is a fair result here um, a draw with goals maybe um, probably uh, one one I I do think Jordan Pickford plays a big role in this one again um, I think he makes some very very important saves for his team but I do think that uh, I do think Cole Palmer for Chelsea does pull something special out of the hat um, but I do think the two sides just cancel each other out. Um, and the spoils will be shared this weekend at Goodison Park. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time. Um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section. Um, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And I mean, while you are here right now, have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now, along with that subscribe button. So you know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And have a great day out there. And we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks. Stay safe.